My name is Wendy Charlebois. I am a I've, I teach social work at Great Basin College in a collaborative program with the University of Nevada Reno and I am also a licensed social worker in the state of Nevada. I moved overseas um, in 1985 and I couldn't work because um, I lived in Germany and I was a nurse and there I, I didn't speak German enough to work in a, a German hospital um, and there weren't any positions available in the American um, military system and so I uh, wanted something to do so I went back to school and became a social worker and I've I I always admired social workers I worked with medical social workers in a big teaching hospital prior to um, moving to overseas so that's how it happened I worked in child welfare and uh, those jobs are always available uh, I had to take once I graduated with my bachelor's degree in social work, which I did that later on in life, I was a nurse before I became a social worker, but um, once I got my bachelor's degree in social work, I had to test, take a test for my license, and I obviously passed the test, and then um, there was a job at Child Protective Services in Elko at the Division of Child and Family Services, and um, I got it and the rest is history. Some of the most positive experiences I've had as a social worker have been uh, because I've helped kids find adoptive homes. That was one of my jobs. Um, after I quit doing actual uh, child abuse investigations, I worked with uh, families and children who uh, they needed an adoptive home. and. I hooked the families up with the kids, and uh, that was those were really positive experiences to help them find a home. And I still actually hear from some of those people still. Okay. And some of the negative experiences are, uh, you know, seeing um, some of the the horrible things that that parents can often do to their children, um, neglect and uh, physical abuse and um, child sexual abuse, those are all really horrible things that happen to children and, and I think the average person doesn't realize um, how much, how often that happens to, to children and you know they suffer the consequences for the rest of their life many times. I've worked with um, substance abusers, I've um, uh, that's the number one reason why uh, children come into foster care, for instance. Um, I've worked with foster parents. I've worked with uh, birth parents um, whose kids are in the foster care system. I've worked with people that have mental health diagnoses. And um, now I work with students. <laughs> well, I think that it's a misunderstood profession. There are a lot of stereotypes about social workers. Um, and I think uh, it's, I have to say, I think it's an underpaid profession. Uh, you know, social workers deal with some of the um, most difficult challenges in our society, and we're not compensated. Um, you know, when I see Derek Jeter, who happens to be my very favorite baseball player, and I'm not begrudging him his salary, but when I see when I see people, when I hear people calling him an American hero, and um, you know, and he makes millions of dollars, and then I think of some of the things that. I've done and my other my social worker friends have have done um, I kind of think that um, you know I've seen heroes uh, in social work and we don't we don't get paid enough I mean that's just one thing but um, I think that social work is an underrated profession and uh, I think that uh, we need more social workers and, and we're going to need more in the future and I think it is a profession that has brought me a lot of satisfaction and joy as well as a lot of sorrow too. Just the workforce issue uh, providing uh, for instance state government uh, hire, employs a lot of social workers. That's where most graduate level, I mean undergraduate level social workers work in the state of Nevada is for state government. Um, 
I think that they need to make a decision that uh, we need to provide more social workers in those public agencies to serve the population. That is one policy. I mean, they need to they need to expand the workforce and hire more social workers because there's been a lot of research done indicating that when clients spend more time with their social worker, um, the outcomes are more positive. And so. Um, uh, if they would employ more social workers, social workers could have lower caseloads. I, I used, I mean, when I was, uh, uh, you know, working in a public agency, I, I used a lot of what I learned in school about um, group process, about um, interviewing skills, that kind of thing. I, I learned, I used a lot of that from my um, curriculum, my education. But then again, you know, I learned a lot from on-the-job training because each public agency has its own policies and, and um, rules and, uh, but, and then of course there's that kind of undercurrent culture, that counterculture within the agency. <laughs> every, every agency has its own culture that, and has its kind of un unspoken and unwritten rules. Well, um, you can work for Child Protective Services, you can work for um, the Division of Aging, which um, works, you know, with usually in, in the homes of elderly people to try and help them stay as independent as possible, mm -hmm. um, working with people with disabilities, uh, mental health, and um, then of course there are nonprofit agencies where social workers work as well that, um, um, that for instance, our food bank here, FISH, Friends and Service Helping, um, uh, the Family Resource Center, so. Well, I think for one thing, um, you need an abundance of compassion for people. Uh, you need um, to have a sense of humor because a lot of the stuff is pretty sad and you have to be able to kind of find, you know, f some humor in it. Um, I think you have to be optimistic. Um, you have to believe in people. And uh, I think you have to have um, persistence and patience. Uh, I mean, there are lots of other things too, but mm -hmm. those are those are I think really really important. The ability to listen. Cultural anthropology is one of them that they are required to take, and I think that that's an important um, class for uh, as a prerequisite. But I think the most important social work classes that um, students take are their interviewing classes, learning how to be a good listener and learning how to interview clients. I think that that's, those are the most important classes, along with learning about human behavior. This is what I would like to do. I would like to, or I think the perfect social work job for me would be to work in a um, like an urban hospital in the um, in the newborn uh, nursery with mm -hmm. and with um, new mothers uh, and the reason why I say that is because I really think that would be a good blend of my um, nursing experience and then um, the idea of being able to kind of um, pinpoint uh, problems before a new mom goes home uh, you know, if you learn about human behavior and uh, the issue of bonding, for instance, between a mother and a, and a, and a newborn, um, you can kind of not make diagnoses, but you can kind of look at a situation and see where a parent might have trouble. Obviously, many women give birth when they're under the influence of substances, unfortunately, and I think that kind of looking at those kinds of situations and doing some real prevention work in terms of uh, preventing child abuse in that kind of a setting. I know it sounds kind of um, like, how could you do that if, between a, a newborn and its mother, but um, just watching the body language and, the, um, and knowing the history of that mother, um, we can prepare her better before she even leaves the hospital for taking care of her baby. I think in any population in, um, in social work is this idea that um, people can change. And that's what I like, is when I can see people make a change, whether it's a student, whether it's a parent trying to get their child back, whether it is a, a, an elderly person who, you know, um, 
transitions from, uh, you know, maybe their own house to an assisted living program, and they feel um, supported and 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 happy about the change. I I think that that's one thing you have to be be able to believe that people can change it, and that's what's exciting about social work. We ask social work students to do a lot of self-reflection and figuring out what their biases are. And I think that, um, you know, you have to learn about what your biases are in the first place. Like if you, you know, if you can't, if you feel like you can't work with someone who has abused a child and you feel really strongly with that, about that, and you can't put that bias in check, then you shouldn't be working with that population. But for the most part, um, Social workers have to learn to um, check their biases at the door, and that's and how you do that. I mean, some some people do a, you know, like they before they walk into their office, they kind of put on their social work hat, and then you know things become different. And um, it's just a, it's a, uh, it's a, um, it's a. You have to become disciplined about that, but you first have to know what they are. Time management. Uh, and and I guess the other piece would be to learn to appreciate the idea that um, you that people don't make big changes. People usually make little changes, and re, and to find joy in that, that because you're not going to be able to fix everyone, and not everyone is going to want to fix themselves. And so, uh, look for those little pieces of those little changes that people make and take pride in that and, and, and take joy in that, that they are making um, changes. But also the time management, that's, mm -hmm. that's really important because you do a lot of paperwork and stuff like that. So I started before we had computers on our desk, you know, and um, um, just managing your phone messages. You know, you would go out in the field and visit families and come back and have, you know, 12, 15, 20 phone messages. Mm -hmm. And um, just learning how to manage that because documentation is so important in social work. Um, you have to document everything, every conversation that you have with a client, you know, all of that. And so you have to figure out how to do all of that in a way that you can leave your office and say, okay, I'm good for today, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. It's hard. I think that people ought to know that um, there are jobs for social workers. Just about everybody that's graduated from this program here at GBC has gotten a job that's wanted a job. Mm -hmm. And um, they, uh, we're going to need um, probably about 20,000 more social workers by the year tw um, 2020 wow. because um, especially working with the elderly and people who are abusing substances that's that's really where the need for social workers and also um, with veterans um, uh, we're going to need uh, we have uh, you know the VA hospital employs more social workers than any other agency in the United States all throughout the United States you know there are VA hospitals and um, that's where they really need social workers and you need to get a graduate degree, a master's degree at least to work for the VA but mm -hmm. um, there are lots and lots of jobs there so if people are looking for work and they want you know they see a, a career in helping others social work is a really great career to think about.